folks. This is a seminar at Three Rivers Marine in Woodenville, Washington. Ryan Bigley of Soundbite Sport Fishing is going to talk about tactics and techniques that you can use to catch coho salmon in the Puget Sound. The Puget Sound and the rivers are just stuffed full of coho right now, and now's the time to get out there. So stick around for this seminar to get some important information on how you can be successful in the Puget Sound for coho salmon. Okay guys, so uh, I hope everybody can hear me. I'm pretty loud. Usually you don't have a problem hearing me. Um, so as Kent said, um, I'm probably familiar with a lot of people. I worked down here in the tackle shop for four or five years. Um, I run a boat just like this, big white. It's got a big red Nike swoosh and it says Three Rivers and all sorts of crazy stuff all over it. So like Kent said, if you see me on the river, if you see me around, feel free to stop by and ask us questions. Same with Doug. Um, we're more than willing to, to let you know what's going on and, and what we've got going. We're not going to hide anything from you. Um, so let's talk about some salmon fishing in the sound. I'm going to focus mainly on silvers. If you have some king questions, let's cover them, but I want to make sure and get through all this. Um, this is my wife with a... Uh, King salmon we caught this year uh, out at Mid Channel. If any of you guys got in on that summer king fishing out there, it was pretty good. A um, little bit of a run for those of us that fish out of Everett or Edmonds, but uh, it, it was a good day and good, some good fishing. So what I'm going to talk about uh, in the order I'm going to cover it a little bit here, I'm going to talk about rods and reels, kind of terminal gear, how we set up, how I set up, what I'd recommend. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about downriggers, how to set them up, and a couple little tips I have. And then I'll cover a couple little things if you don't have a downrigger. And right now is the time. If you don't have a downrigger and you want to catch salmon in the Puget Sound, go tomorrow. You will catch them. Um, we'll talk a little bit about tackle and questions. If you have questions, just raise your hand throughout and we'll try and cover them. So, rods. Um, Lama glass, uh, Kent here at Three Rivers, gentleman just introduced me, and some other people, all of us here at the shop or that have been around, worked with Lama glass and custom built these downrigger rods. They're pretty cool. They retail for about three hundred dollars, so they are not cheap rods, not inexpensive at all. But uh, nice carbon fiber handles, good reel seats, and they work great on the downriggers. They've got plenty of power to hold that flasher, but they're still light enough. Let's be totally honest, in the sound here, we don't always have the largest salmon. So they're a lot of fun. Um, Loomis uh, makes some good downrigger rods. SAMR 1174s is what I like, nine and a half foot, nine foot, nine inch. 1086, nine foot, nine foot rod. Anything from nine foot to 10 and a half, or eight and a half to 10 and a half feet, anywhere from 10 to 40 pound line rating. Kind of just figure what you're after. Uh, Daiwa's got some new stuff on the market that's pretty good as well. So that's kind of the rods that you're looking for. Uh, the reels, Shimano Dakotas, they have the fancy line counters. They work real well. A um, little more on the expensive side. Daiwa makes the Saltiste, and that's a line counter and the sea lines, um, a great thing to go. If you're going to buy a new reel for salmon fishing, you have to buy a line counter. No question. Even if you're going to use a downrigger and fish on the bottom, fish with a downrigger, you don't always have to reset it. You don't always have to use it. But it is so nice to just know. You can take that reel and go pull troll plugs in the river later on with it, know how far out you are. or some guys like, it's really cool when you catch a big fish and you watch 100 feet of line run off. That's pretty cool to see. So there's no reason not to do it. The line counters are a great, great asset now. So that's kind of that. Terminal tackle, main line. I'm a fan of mono, especially fishing downriggers. I just like the fact that it has a little bit of stretch in it. It seems to keep the pressure on those fish since you're fishing barbless out in the sound a little better. And it seems to stay in my clips a little better. I haven't switched to the pro clips where you got to wrap it or any of that yet. So I'm a big fan of mono, um, Iser line or P line. Um, clear, high vis, doesn't really make a difference. Pretty much, pretty much personal preference, whatever you want to do. Um, 
So I, I don't think having bright green line tied to your flasher is going to slow you down. Um, either way, swivel, swivels. You need a ball bearing swivel when you're going to tie to a flasher. Bomax got some good ones. Uh, there's the welded ring ones. You just add a little dual lock snap on there, and they'll snap right on. Or there's some that come with a snap as well. Um, they're a great price point for you. So we carry those here at the shop. Um, and just tie that on the end, and you're good to go. That's going to save you a lot of hassle down the, down the road of getting line twist with that flasher. It's the worst thing. Leaders. I've, I've pretty much switched over to 100% fluorocarbon. It's a little bit more expensive. It takes a little bit more time to tie. You do have to be careful with it. I know Kent was going through showing some guys how to tie leaders. You really got to make sure and get that line lubed up. See, when you pull it through, you can burn it real easy when you're tying that knot. So be careful with that. But I've seen some improvement. I, I think it's a lot better. Um, so if I'm going to fish bait, just a standard mooching rig and a cut plug herring or herring and a helmet, anywhere from 15 to 30 pound. For spoons, 20 to 25 pound, a little lighter, just so that the spoon gets good action on it. And when I fish a squid, I want 30 to 50 pound leader. Mainly in the sound, I focus 30 or 40 pound leader. You can go up to 50, but I don't, I don't really see a need around here. Uh, the reason I want that heavier leader is that flasher is going to impart more action on your squid. And it's really nice when you're trying to release fish. You don't have to deal with that smaller leader and breaking hooks off and losing time on the water. Hooks, anywhere from one aught to four aught hooks. Um, early in the year when I'm king salmon fishing, I fish a lot of small squid. The bait early in the year seems to be a little smaller. So I cut stuff down and just downsize everything. Um, this time of year, I'm back to three aughts or four aughts. And they seem to hook up those coho a little better. Um, and then just replacement hooks on your, uh, on your spoons is the side wash. One, any, anywhere from a size one to a two aught. Some guys fish bigger if you're going to fish a five inch spoon or something like that. So downriggers, gosh, there's all sorts of different brands. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I've used them all. I grew up fishing pen downriggers. And I fish Scotties now. If you're going to spend money and buy downriggers, buy Scotties. I, they're so easy to work on. They, they don't go bad. Lifetime warranty, they're good to go. Um, electric versus manual, how much money you want to spend and how much energy you got. If you got a fishing partner that's young and likes to crank up a downrigger, then get manual ones. So either way, they're worth it. It's worth getting them and then just upgrading over time. They're, they're really a helpful thing if you don't have one. Cable versus braid. There's some new, new stuff. I guess it's really not new. What's been on the market for five or 10 years now. Guys are fishing a heavy braided line, so synthetic braided line on their downriggers instead of cable. Um, it works well. You got to use some different releases and different things to clip on it, so I haven't switched over yet. But uh, there's both of those weights. Um, I wouldn't, if I'm going to go out in the bay, I wouldn't fish anything smaller than a 12-pound downrigger ball. It just there's so there's so much current out there, and it if you fish a 10-pounder, you can be at times where you've got such a strong angle that you really don't have a clue how how, how far down you are. You might say 80 feet on your downrigger, but really you're fishing around 50 or 60. It's going to throw you off. So the 12 pounders are nice. It gives you a little truer reading. Uh, 15 pounders work good. If you've, uh, what's your question? Out in the ocean, when you're fishing, how big a downrigger balls? Yeah. Same thing. 12s, 15s. I, if if you get the new Scotty downriggers, the fancy high-speed ones, go with 15s. They'll operate way better. I've had some trouble with uh, the 12s wanting to drop. The 15s seem to pull a little better. But yeah, 12s or 15s, either way. But I, I would definitely go that route. Um, do you need a coated one, uncoated one? Does it have to be just a ball or skinny? It doesn't really make any difference. Just consider that if you have a real big flat, like pancake one that you see sometimes, they say they track better. That's if you're going straight. 
A lot of times around here we're fishing where there's some current coming to the side of us. If you're fishing on possession bar and you got a current pushing you sideways, that's a bigger profile sideways, so it's going to want to push your gear underneath your boat, and it has a tendency of sometimes wanting to tangle you up. So keep, keep, them, keep that in mind. And then you can't really read it very well, but when you're fishing with a downrigger and you catch one, don't run over and grab your other rod and pop it out of the water. Leave it in. Just make a small, slow troll turn into the inside. Try and keep the fish away from that side, but keep that rod in the water. You caught one, there's probably a couple others around. Get a double. Releases. Um, there's all sorts of releases on the market. Uh, Scotty releases down here at the bottom. Offshore releases. Everybody makes one. You want at least a medium tension release um, and bury that line in the clip. There's two little dots here or on the Scotty release. In the next picture I'll show you there's a line. Bury that line in there. You want to make sure that it's tough for that fish to get it out. You want it to have to work and get itself hooked. Um, something that I've also started doing is these snubbers that you guys are probably pretty familiar with that you put on the bottom of your downrigger cable between your ball and your cable. I've put that on my release now and it gives a little shock for those fish. It gives them a little bit of a chance to sit there and get the hooks good and buried before it pops off. Um, so that's actually been pretty, pretty productive for me recently. I just started doing that this year. So that's a, a good way to go. Um, also a swivel, that's the nice thing about these too is if you get a swivel in there, it helps because sometimes it gets twisted up between getting it put down or whatever. If you don't have a swivel, you'll see your line will get wrapped around here or something when you're trying to drop it down. And I, you know, we've all had it where you got a fish down there shaking and you can't get it out of the clip and you bring it up and your stuff's broken off or your fish is gone and your line's tangled up in your release. That swivel will help that. So releases, um, if you fish Scotty releases, if you push this little clip in the back forward, it's light tension. It's great for fishing sockeye in Baker Lake if you're using a dodger or fishing kokanee. They actually work real well. But when you're out in the bay, you want it set for heavy tension. You want to push that back. It's going to be harder. Um, that way when you get it down to 100 feet, it doesn't pop off on you without a fish. You want to make sure that it's in there good. Um, and you can see here, there's a line here on this release, and I'm putting my line all the way back, all the way back in there. And Scotty sells a replacement little chartreuse colored cap you can put on there if you're having trouble with them. Make sure and keep scent away from your downward releases, right? Scent's going to get in there and make them slimy. And it's the most frustrating thing if you're out there fishing and you put a rod down and you turn around and you look back and the rod's up in the air, you think you had a fish. Or you stack and you're putting two rods on one downer and you drop it down and the bottom one pops off. So you want, want good releases. Make sure and have a couple spares. That's a lot of information, so make sure you stick around for part two and Ryan Bigley of Soundbite Sport Fishing talking about coho tactics on the Puget Sound.